Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Bohemian Like You by the Dandy Warhols. This is a really cool, fun song to play along with the original recording, I've got to say. Uh, and it's in open G tuning, right? So it's a really kind of good introduction to open tuning. It's using a very kind of classic Keith Richards move, that Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones. Uh, if you learn this technique and you learn the tuning, you'll probably spot it in a few Rolling Stones songs. So uh, you want to watch out for that. So open G tuning. Uh, basically, we're going to tune three strings down one tone. Now, I've got a whole video about how to do it, but the really quick one, you want to tune the thinnest string down one tone, so it's the note D. You can use a, the open D string as a reference and then just tune your thinnest string so it sounds the same note as the fourth string. Then you want to do that same thing again on the thicker string, so you're going to play the open fourth string and tune the thicker string down, so that's also a D. And then you're going to tune the fifth string down to the note G. So you can use the third string, which is the note G, and tune that fifth string, the second thickest string, down so it's a note G as well. And when you do that, you get this chord, okay, which is an open G chord, right? A G chord without having to put any fingers on. You're not going to play the thicker string other than for the little riff thing that I show you. In this song, otherwise, you're just going to leave the thicker string alone. Uh, that's why Keith Richards famously played a five-string Telecaster, right? Because you very rarely play the thicker string there in, uh, in open tuning unless you're playing a little riff thing. <laughs> Okay, so you can see here, most of the riff is based around this little bar. And that's the cool thing about this open G tuning is that you can use a bar to play the whole chord. So this one is a B chord, we're at the fourth fret, okay? So the big deal is to make sure that the tip of the first finger is muting the thicker string. You want to avoid trying to hit it with your pick as well, but as a little safety precaution, use the tip of your finger just to touch it, right? It's not pressing it down, it's just sitting, the, the tip of the finger is on here, on the fifth string, and you just t move it up just a little bit, to touch it, because it only needs a little touch to mute that thicker string, okay? So that would be our B chord. Now the, the Keith Richards move, it's a really, really classic. It's really just so many stone songs are based around this. Um, so uh, the trick is here, we're putting these two fingers down, which is the uh, second finger in the fifth fret of the uh, second string and the third finger in the sixth fret of the fourth string and then lifting them on and off. Really good fun thing to experiment with in general. You'll find loads of cool songs and cool riffs that are using this little idea. Okay, so we're doing this on the B first of all. I'll go through with the rhythm a little bit more detail in a sec, but that's the B. Now we're going up to a D chord, same thing again, so D is now at the 7th fret. And then we're going down to an A, which is at the 2nd fret. And then to an E, which is all of the way up at the 9th fret. Okay, so we have this movement. B, dun, da, da, E, da, ba, da, A, to E. That's the 4th fret, to the 7th fret, to the 2nd fret, to the 9th fret, I'm bohemian. Okay, now the verses are just using the bar, and you'll just use a bit of 8th note. So, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and all down strums probably, why do you do? Oh yeah, 7th fret for you, then it's down to 2nd fret, and up to 9th fret for the last, and it repeats. The same thing for the verse again, down to 2nd fret and then up to the ninth fret, then we're going to like you, like you, and I like you, I feel so even like you. Okay, let's have a little look at the rhythm and how that uh, little 6 sus 4 chord fits into the whole thing. So let me just play it for you once so you can see what's going on with the strumming. Three, four. <laughs> So first of all, I want you to make sure that you notice that the strumming hand was moving consistently throughout. There are other approaches to doing it, but this is what I would recommend that you start off with. Okay, so the actual riff itself... Okay, 
Okay, I've just simplified and I'm doing it, repeating it round there on the B chord. So the first chord of the actual pattern is an upstroke on the and after four. So one, two, three, four, and. Okay, so it's an upstroke. You can see that my fingers are resting on the chords to make sure it all stays quiet beforehand. And then they just lift up when I want the chord to ring out. Okay, we're then going to let that ring out across beat one, and then we're going to play it again on the and after one, which will be another upstroke. So three, four, and one, and two. And then on beat two, we're going to put the six sus four down with, and play it with a down strum. And then we're going to relax the hand. You can hear the chord stop. Okay, nothing to do with this hand muting here. It's all just the fretting hand. Lifts up a little bit. Okay, it's not a dead stop. But you can hear just relaxing the chord stops the notes from ringing out, okay? And we're going to play the chord again on beat three with a down stroke and then off on the and after three. So this much slowly, first of all. Three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and Now, quite often on beat four, you're going to get a bit of a muted hit there as we're changing chords. So if we now take that little pattern and move it around, we'd have the B, three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and Now it's ever so slightly different on the E chord, okay? So I'm going to do that one more time up to the E chord, and then I'll take you through the E chord separately. So again, starting on the B, three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and... Okay, so here, just on the E, we've started with the, what's called the push, the upstroke on the and after four. But then we're on the and after one, we put the chord down again, which will be an upstroke, sorry, and then down again on beat two without the fingers. So three, four, and one, and two, three, and four. Okay, and that last part, three, and four. Okay, the one on beat four is kind of sometimes a little bit muffled on the original recording because they're transitioning to the next chord. So I quite often don't play that one on, on four, but it is, it does sound like it's kind of there on the record, but there's multiple guitar tracks on the record as well. So it can be a little confusing. Let me play that riff through now all of the way through a few times, nice and slow with the count so you can get how it's going on. Here we go. Three, four, and one, and two, three, and 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 four, and one, Okay, now once you get that up to speed, Already you can probably start to hear some other notes kind of sneaking in there. And what I find with, um, I've watched quite often Ronnie Wood play up close and seen how he's strumming, and it's a little bit more random. That's the only word I can think of. It's not always consistent, you know, this continual hand movement thing. So sometimes you hear... <laughs> And I hear a bit of that on this recording as well, that it's a little bit less, it's not all consistent, although looking at the video clip you can see his hand moving pretty consistently through the whole thing. So it's up to you. I would recommend starting with a nice even picking hand motion and learn the whole thing. And then if you want to kind of change how you pick it, I think, you know, it's perfectly valid to do so. 
So the other parts that you need for this song are just the verse, which is the same chord sequence again, but played with just even down strokes with a little bit of palm mute, so... Okay, now there's multiple guitars on the original recording. There's definitely an acoustic guitar playing the riff, the electric guitar, there's one playing lower open chords as well. So in regular tuning, remember that you can, of course, you can play the same thing just using like a B power chord. You know, these, these shapes, are just, they're going to sound horrible, but you could play, you know, B power chord there, D, A and E, the nice open chords, open power chords. There's lots of different ways of playing it, and listen to the original recording, you'll hear lots of different layers going on. Now, um, the other part that you really need is this little riff. Now, the original recording, the guitar just seems to be hanging on the B. With this little riff going... That's the riff. Fourth fret on the fifth string, seventh fret on the thicker string, fourth fret on the thicker string, and then back again. One and two, three, four, one and two, three, four. It's kind of emulating the synth part, right? Because it's that's a synth part. You could also go like I'm just kind of making up a part now, so it'll be up to you to have an experiment and see if you can get this or that little riff while you're playing that chord at the same time. So now you've learned this Rolling Stones open G tuning trick, I definitely recommend you have a go at working out some Rolling Stones songs on your own. A really good starter for 10 would be Brown Sugar, okay? It's all just using the open G tuning, the first finger sliding up and down, and the little, you know, 6 sus 4. There's a few variations in Brown Sugar, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but you'll hear it. I learned it just using that that trick and I hadn't paid too much attention for that and was playing it in bands for years so you can enjoy that as well and don't be too fussy when you're transcribing your stuff to start off with just be trying to get it as close as you can and enjoy playing along with the original recordings but there's loads of other stone songs that use a similar sort of thing Honky Tonk Woman another one in Open G uh, uses that Start Me Up is another one similar shape um, there's loads, loads and loads. So go off and have a little bit, a bit of an explore with this idea. Learn this particular song. This is a great tune as well. Great fun to play along with the original recording. I just had a little jam along myself before I do doing this lesson. It's like, yeah, cool song, you know. Really enjoy it. But there's there's more to it than that as well, you know, to go and check out some of the, the people they were obviously influenced by, like the Rolling Stones, and see how else you might be able to use it. So have fun with that, and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.